Now, ordinarily, when taking an overview in relation to the sheer insanity of weaponry of 40k, either in its destructive power or incomprehensible construction, we're used to hearing things being described as world-ending, horrifying, able to vaporize and deflagrate their enemies of the 41st millennium, or all manner of other stomach-turning consequences literally in the case of having snotlings warp ported inside of you still one of the most traumatic of deaths when it comes to playing guardsman death bingo in the verse of 40k there is a whole galaxy of weapons and tech ideology and so on to explore so if you enjoy these more pointed episodes focused in on specifics do me a solid by remembering to hit that like drop your thoughts in the comments because truly every interaction helps and as my long-term motto for the channel remains, the better a video performs, the more of them I will make. So if you have a specific piece of war gear you want drilled down on, such as the recent episode where we considered the viability of las guns, tell me in the comments what and why you'd want to see, and I may well be able to get to it in the future. When we're talking about weaponry of the 41st millennium, you have things like the Necron's Celestial Orrery. So what the hell is the Celestial Orrery? It's so insanely powerful that even the Necron understand it cannot be used recklessly, crafted before the war in heaven, and said to be perhaps the most complete tool of stellar cartography in the galaxy. But not merely an astro-navigational tool, the Necrons utilizing the Orrery can extinguish a star, and by doing so, its physical counterpart will turn supernova, bringing fire and total annihilation to any worlds contained within its galactic vicinity. It may sound like a tool to be used at every opportunity then, but the Necron thankfully understand that somehow its use could create devastating wider impacts in the vast timescale of the galaxy, and so refrain from using it. For so many factions of M41, the horrifying world-scarring Xenos Tyranids, the god machines of the Imperium and Mechanicus, titans marching across worlds to subdue or break them, the 40k verse is one of varying and awe-inspiring scale. For all this incomprehensible destructive power though, there are many worlds who operate at a more, let's say, basic level sharp sticks, bludgeons, ancient projectile weapons that wouldn't be far out of place in the 20th century. And then of course we come to the lovably endearing orcs. Smash it, bash it, burn it, shoot it, smack it. Orcs are of course one of those most appealing of factions in 40k because of their comical ability to just make things work, be that at a very basic or complex level of engineering, much to the annoyance of the Mechanicus who wish that they could just slap things together and have it function within tolerable levels of efficiency. When it comes to weaponry, the orcs follow pretty much their same principles. If it does the job, who cares if it's a bodge job, so long as it goes daka kaboom zap, or other interpretations of sound. For an orc, a board with a big nail in it would do just nicely, providing you smack it hard enough into a squishy umi. So in that sense, the concept of taking a squig strapping explosives to it and sending it charging toward the enemy may not be such an insane proposition. Squigs, after all, are among the most disposable of orc forms. They occupy a strange strata of orc hierarchy, somewhere between food, pets, entertainment and weapons. Incidentally, most squigs are able to be food for orcs, but specific squigs often apply to specific tasks. For example, certain types are kept especially for cooking or scoffing. Like so many orcoid forms, squigs naturally grow and can be kind of crossbred in a manner of speaking within orc settlements. They subsist on generally orc refuse and sometimes they can be farmed for this. Gretchen snotlings are tasked with collecting and tending to those which require it under the supervision of so-called runt herds. Other squigs are reared in a variety of conditions, total darkness, cage bred, tanks for containment, etc. Some are crossbred, like I said, to try and produce alternative varieties. Some are used in medicine by docks. They have really innumerable uses. So for as lowly as they are, squigs are one of the most fundamental necessities for orcs not that far away from their fungus, so it's just as well they naturally form and are mostly plentiful. But like I say, not all battle squigs are alike, some have very specific uses. Any squig though theoretically could be a bomb squig, but not all bomb squigs could be the most ideal as say an attack squig. Because while to a human all squigs look just pretty terrifying, generally meaty with gnashing sharp teeth and an instinctive drive to just charge at whatever and bite it, 
attack squigs are seen by an orc as being far more vicious, bigger, toothier, faster, basically bred for battle. Unsurprisingly, these are often kept as pets by bigger orcs, especially a boss. Or they may be simply hurled into bunkers of human guardsmen and left to get to work, leaving behind only shredded remains. Should a line of guardsmen be unlucky enough to be charged by a horde of attack squigs, it's very dependent on their lasgun charge packs and maybe the Emperor's protection if they are to survive or be overrun by a wave of chomping unstoppable critters who will stop at nothing to devour their targets and get inside them, eat them from the inside out, take limbs off, not entirely dissimilar to base tyranid forms in that regard to be honest. So squigs have this variety of forms suitable for battle. Some literally explode like a bomb, others are filled with acidic bile, making them suitable to be catapulted or fired or thrown toward the enemy, showering them on impact with armour and flesh dissolving acids. Again, not untyranid like There are rideable squigs which have hardened bodies for smashing and crushing enemy. Even some squigs have amassed dense neural areas bloated with enough cerebral function to seemingly be used by the orcs' so-called psi bombs. Orcs just call these weird squigs though. So now with this hostile plethora of bitey orc forms available, imagine what will occur when orc mech boys get a proper big brain thought in their heads. And usually this means combining one thing with another, and creating some hybrid monstrosity of an offensive weapon. That combined with orc brutality is a bad recipe for anyone who gets in the eyes of a warg hyped rage fueled orc looking to hunt down space marines as if they were wild animals, or Imperial Lehman Rust tanks as if they were big game trophies. This may not accurately conjure the image you're thinking of, because it's not a stealthy game of ranged hunting. Very often it may mean simply throwing as much explosives as possible toward the target, or even just strapping bombs, rockets, grenades to a big piece of stick or metal, and hurling it or physically smacking it against your enemy, so that you get to see them blown clean apart at relatively close range. But alternatively, you could use a bomb squig. This tool of indiscriminate carnage is rightly feared, because a bomb squig is essentially a concentrated ball of aggression. Strong but stubby legs for bounding across battlefields, pointed teeth and a spiky tail should they need to hurl themselves and latch onto something. Squigs perform this task of a charging suicide bomb adeptly, not least because their almost non-existent intelligence renders them with little to no concept of their own mortality and as such leaves them fearless. Its only instinctive drive is its saturation of attacking the enemy with that aggression. At some point in time, an orc of who knows which variety, potentially even a Gretchen, had the sharp idea of strapping anti-armour, or indeed any, explosives to squigs and then sending them on their merry way toward the enemy. Likely this came about due to the observation that while a charging attack squig could tear limbs clean off of fleshy guardsmen, or alternatively just gnaw right through them, the masses were enthusiastic but still very fleshy. Squigs were far less effective when attempting to latch themselves onto walking armoured enemies or heavy vehicles. And for all their similarities with the Tyranid, the one thing orcs do lack are those claws and teeth that the Tyranid are able to carve through Imperial Ceramite and Adamantium like butter. Still, Squig's instinctive drive to still have a go anyway had not changed, and they were at least more than able to deliver themselves to the enemy. At best though, their abilities against more armoured targets tended to be clogging mechanical parts with their crushed bodies so it was an obvious step to simply slap a huge explosive on them. I say obvious, whichever orc came up with the concept was probably regarded as a legendary genius by general orc standards. So let's hope they never come upon the idea to grow larger squigs and then adapt them into stomping mechanical monstrosities. The thought of a titan scale squig stomper really doesn't bear thinking about. Plus, any half-witted orc knows that runturds breed the best squigs, so the breeding pens soon became the place orcs would visit to begin wider testing and deployment of bomb squigs. Teeth down on the table, you could literally bag yourself a yellow-spotted face nasher, a greater fang gob, or perhaps you favour the infamous leaping deaf breed, all coming with a slight variation on how successful they might be against your intended target of detonation and dispersal over a wide area. Chosen squigs are extracted from the squig pens by obviously being smacked in the head with a blunt instrument because even orcs know better than to reach an arm into a squig pen and try to extract an unsubdued squig. 
Then they'll be stuffed into the aforementioned bags and carted off to the nearest mech boys to get bombed. Generally mechs are more used to patching up orcs, adapting them, and generally dealing with things that are less active and surely less likely to tear their faces off at the earliest opportunity. But when enough teeth are on the table, a good mech can be persuaded to adapt squigs with the desired explosives and their optimal means of delivery and detonation. A creative mech may even relish the opportunity to try out some of their more experimental explosive combinations, which may or may not be conveyed to the customer. The mech will be sure to want to be able to see the results in action though. On the other hand, a half assed job might simply be a case of ramming a squig's gob with sticks of explosives, wrapping a few more around the outside to make sure it's got a big enough bang, and connecting its fuses. Sorted. Orc mechs can customise a squig with just about anything going. Tank buster bombs, pressure mines, directionally explosive cranial transplants. Imperial reports have even claimed that the Ultrisica breach disaster began with a single mad-eyed bomb squig charging into the midst of the Corsican 3rd artillery with a vortex grenade clamped between its teeth. Yes, a vortex bomb squig. I mean, sure, why not? But I'm sure that that would be a surprise. Bad enough having a massive concussion blast tearing through your squad, but then the fleshy, bouncing ball of angry teeth rips a hole through not your friend, but reality itself, and you're dragged screaming in body and soul into the depths of the warp to untold eternal horrors. It's a very 40k death. Not unlike most orcs, squigs will be foaming at the mouth by the time they're unleashed upon a battlefield. Orcs are bad enough, but bomb squigs who've been caged for extended periods of time will be seething with frustration and fury. They'll almost explode with energy as they're released towards the enemy, scuttling off toward the nearest infantry or vehicular prey that they can find. Alternatively, they could be launched from squig launchers toward the enemy, or even from fast-moving so-called rocket truck squig buggies. These were invented by enterprising snakebite orcs and the fast vehicles act as either high-octane mobile pens full of edible squigs for speedier orc types to stay fed from, providing a decent enough bag of teeth gets chucked over to them, of course. And as with most orc discoveries, they tend to be visually led. And so the legend goes that it was only after a rabid attack squig was accidentally stuffed into the launcher and fired into a luckless orc's face that they realised the far more humorous and nasty possibilities of their concept. Rocket trucks can be identified by their more sturdy, but still chaotic construction, coupled with a meaty engine roar, and that most obvious sign being masses of squigs and orcs riding aboard them. Rocket trucks operate as close-range artillery vehicles to fire their vicious, unrelenting squigs into enemy positions at speed and more directly than letting the barely self-aware squigs run around on their own. The consequences are pure blissful havoc amongst the enemy ranks. Crews have been seen to fire any and all varieties from their speeding trucks from buzzer squig pots and bellow lunged screech squigs to the truly revolting and quite self-explanatory, panic-inducing bowel torrent squigs. Not something you want to be thrown into a bunker as it's chewing through you and basically shitting everywhere at the same time. Three types of living ammunition are particularly common though, bitey squigs, bile squigs and boom squigs. Bitey squigs include any squiggly beast with sufficient jaws, claws, and stingers to savage the target and anything stood close by. They'll launch gnashing and snarling into the enemy and latch onto the first thing they hit and don't stop chewing until they're bludgeoned, stomped, or shot to death. Bile squigs, as we learned, are again self explanatory. These comprise any breed that the crew can get hold of, which are going to squirt, spray, or vomit harmful fluid. As discussed, these disgusting creatures squeal and thrash while madly jetting acids, lubricant, poisons, even flammable bioslop in all directions. The boom squig though is infamous for its defence mechanism of violently exploding at the slightest provocation. Comically, the concept of this is to warn off predators, typically stupid and orky, considering it kills a squig in the process, and detonating with such force that they kill or maim anything unlucky enough to be in the vicinity. Stupid, but good ammo for a rocket truck. They can also be dropped by the crew as living landmines or just as a bit of a laugh because nothing provokes greater amusement amongst a rocket truck crew than hiding a boom squig under their driver's seat. Funny, but also can prove inconvenient for everybody else for obvious reasons. The big question though, squig launchers from a rocket truck and a bomb squig? 
It's not something commonly seen, perhaps the idea of driving around in an orc truck with crew who are borderline happy to sabotage your own vehicle, coupled with angry bouncing squigs and then also high explosives, seems a combination too risky even for an orc. On the other hand, maybe they just haven't put one and one together yet and realised that this would allow them to shoot bunker busting squig bombs or take out heavier targets as well. More likely, it's the fact that bomb squigs tend to essentially have munitions either strapped to them or stuffed into them, and this can make them no longer such a squishy blob that can be just rammed into a squig launcher. Still, some kind of basic catapult would surely suffice, so it's not impossible to see a dangerously strapped bomb squig being hurled in your general direction on the battlefield. Back though to those more self-propelled bomb squigs, there are ways to improve their effectiveness, and some orcs will say that the bestest bomb squigs have undergone a form of rudimentary training to hunt enemy. And I'm using that term rudimentary in the strongest possible terms, because even with the most concerted efforts, getting a squig to learn has a varying level of success, but always remains a severe investment of effort versus diminishing returns. Even then, it's certainly no guarantee at all that a bomb squig will actually go where it's needed or even in the right direction at all, which as always is the sheer comedy of the orc race in 40k, unleashing raging, frothing, bouncing, scuttling, angry monsters across a battlefield is bad enough. But then strapping them up with as much explosives as possible, hilariously dangerous, and then to top it all, there's a fair chance that they just get confused and run back towards some team of grots, eating some alive before detonating as they smash through a vehicle bay or artillery position. To be fair to the squigs though, amid the smoke and deafening chaos of an M41 battlefield, their ability to determine specifically one large, fast-moving vehicle from another is certainly not something they are well suited for. Their eyesight is extremely poor, and they're more comfortable just running toward the nearest moving thing and hurling themselves indiscriminately against the hull of said target. Explosions so massive, they've even been said to turn a Lehman Rush battle tank fully over. The same fate, of course, could equally await any orc truck or battle wagon mistakenly targeted by these explosive homicidal monsters. Of course, were you a member of the Imperium, perhaps some other like the Eldar or the Tau, friendly fire would be at best frowned upon, at worst severely punishable. For the orcs, like most things, it's all a good laugh, innit? Seeing a bomb squig blow apart a knob's favourite ride blown out from under them? Hilarious. The more explosions, the more DACA, the more WAG and smashed ruination, the better. Who knows, maybe some will even slap a few teeth down for causing such battlefield comedy or making a rival knob look like a proper grot. <laughs>